Hey, Replay viewers, thank you for watching Far East Adventure Travel in Duduk's Tomb, Way, Vietnam. How are y'all? It's 11.35 a.m. here in Way, Vietnam, and I'm at uh, one of the most important sites here in the imperial capital of Way. Uh, this is Duduk's Tomb, and uh, uh, Duduk was uh, the longest reigning emperor in the, uh, during the Nguyen uh, era. Of Vietnam. So he was uh, in power for 36 years. He built this absolutely grandiose um, tomb and uh, almost like a pleasure palace. He, he still used it while he was alive. Hey, Gerard. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm going to just take you on a little trip around here. I'm going to show you the tomb, a couple of buildings, the lake here. I mean, this is all built by 10,000 workers. It's crazy. He almost had a revolt here. It took three years to build this thing. It's absolutely amazing i have to tell you it's so impressive it's apparently it's not the most impressive of all of the duen emperor tombs i'm going to go to min mang and i think that one is way up there but this is really out of this world this is all was all made by 10,000 people in three years and it's absolutely gorgeous please let me know where you're watching from and do feel free to share the broadcast if you think your friends and followers would enjoy uh like a gorgeous sight here people are waving at me hi people are waving it's it's so exciting here this gorgeous uh, tomb of uh, emperor duduk here kentucky how are you let me know where you're watching from and please share the broadcast and i'm going to take you around here it's going to take a few minutes to walk around the grounds what do you want to see first what do you want to see first i'm going to show you a few things this is the lake so what uh, the emperor would do would come down here and he would have his concubines with him and he would write poetry he was a poet he was a poet king and he would write poetry and he would sit here and they would listen to music and he would have all his concubines around them he had over a hundred wives he had more concubines but he never had children he couldn't have kids apparently it was because he he, he had contracted smallpox they, they think that's what made him sterile they <laughs> they have some food here but nothing like nothing like really good street type food there's it's just like snacks and packaged stuff nothing super special here this is about um 10 kilometers outside of the city i rented a motorbike to get out here you can hire a car i i i'm comfortable driving around here so i just rented a motorbike for the day at least like six bucks this little island here was uh made for him so he could hunt small game so he would go out here and the emperor would hunt small game on this little island and i don't believe anybody can get out there right now the public is not allowed out there but these pavilions on the lake here are just gorgeous and uh, I'll, I'll walk you around oh hey ian how are you yes the the lotus uh, the lotus look just absolutely stunning here what did i eat for breakfast i had a tuna a baguette <laughs> and an, uh, an americano um, I, I sometimes I'll have like Vietnamese pancakes for breakfast. I did uh, when I was in Hoi An a lot, um, or uh, noodle soup, vegetable noodle soup. But I don't eat pho, and they, they a lot of the street vendors will make like stuff with pork and beef and that, which I don't eat. So I gotta be a little choosy. And then I, I eat breakfast a little bit earlier, and some of the places don't open till nine. So I found a decent place. It was a good baguette. You know they make good sandwiches here. Ban mi. Ban mi. Hey, let me know where you're watching from. Good day to you from Hue, Vietnam. Uh, well, it is for me because I don't eat pork. I said, either you got your choice of pork or beef or tuna. That's about it. Okay, do you guys want to see these? Um, I want to show you these concubine quarters. Hey, Miami, Michigan, how are you? I just stumbled on them myself. I don't think anybody comes up here to this part where I kind of, I just wandered off and I found these uh, places, but it doesn't seem like people are like uh, are a lot of organized tours will take them to the tomb area. And by the way, uh, he was never buried here. Uh, Duduk, the emperor, was never buried here. He, his burial place to this day, hello, how are you? His burial place to this day is secret. You're not gonna believe what he did. What I was gonna say is, you know what he did? The 200 people that were involved in actually burying him in a secret place in Wei he beheaded them all. 
all 200 of them. He beheaded them all so nobody would know where his body is. And to this day, nobody knows where his body actually is entombed. It's supposed to be here. That's why the emperors build these places, so that their body is laid to rest here. His stepson, or not his stepson, his adoptive son, who took over reigns, wasn't in power very long, is here. His, uh, his main wife is here. I think his mother is buried here as well. But uh, no, no, he wouldn't. nobody knows where he is. Nobody knows where he is. This is some of the stuff that hasn't been restored. There's, there was lots of buildings here, by the way, lots of buildings. So the, all the really prime good stuff is, is, is all pristine. But can you imagine what all of this was like back here? Now he had hundreds of servants and workers and he actually lived out here as well before he died because this place was built before he was died. Yeah, I know, I got the white paint question. I'll find out for you. I'll ask somebody. Thanks. Thanks for inviting your followers too. Okay, so this is where the concubines lived up in here. Sometimes you can't get into these places. In India, you can. Some of the palaces, they'll let you go to where the concubines were. But in, in other parts of Asia, not necessarily. Like in uh, Bangkok, in the, um, in the uh, Grand Palace, uh, you can't see where the concubines lived. They have it all shut off. But uh, this is where they were, back here. Beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you. So this is one of the old buildings. So the concubines were up here. There was hundreds, maybe at least a hundred, maybe hundreds of them. And show you some of the, the roofs here because it's just absolutely stunning. The, uh, the buildings and how, how um, well kept they have been. Because this is built in the 1800s now. Thanks for watching. Uh, do feel free to share with your friends and followers if you think they would enjoy a glimpse at an emperor's tomb in Vietnam. They could be, my friend. They could be. That's a good point about the bonsai trees. Yeah, they could be. They're just stunning. I saw some beautiful ones at uh, Mu Tien, or Tien Mu uh, Pagoda yesterday. Absolutely gorgeous. I'll, I'll get up close to some. Yes, they were very short people. Yes, they were very short people. He was very short. I think he was 150 centimeters, something like that, 156 centimeters tall. This is the temple, uh, the main temple here. They're gorgeous, aren't they? There are uh, big tour groups that come through here. I thought it might start to quiet down. It's 15 minutes before noon. A lot of them sort of stop the big touring at lunch. They go to some place and have a big lunch somewhere. But uh, there's still groups rolling in here. It's a little bit harder to get to. You have to drive out of town. It's maybe about 10 kilometers outside of the city. These, these tombs are built in the country. This is all jungle, apparently, before uh, the emperor chose his spot to build uh, this place. You think? You think? I'm not an expert, so I couldn't tell you, but look, it is just amazing, isn't it? Here's, look at this one here with the, uh, the pagoda in the background. It's pretty quiet. It was a little bit busier about, uh, I got here about two hours ago. And uh, I got here just before it got busy. And then as soon as I got here, I got up to this level and I was doing some filming for my podcast. And all of a sudden, these big groups just started rolling in. And then I went for a walk further away from this main area here. And then I came back and it was like I was on the Everest Base Camp uh, trekking trail. There was just people everywhere. Yes, you can buy beer here. Yes, you can buy beer anywhere in Vietnam. Um, I ha well, yeah, I would like to go back to South America eventually. I mean, right now my turf is Asia. This is kind of my beat that I cover. Uh, but I would love to see Argentina and Peru. I've been to Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands, and I really enjoyed that. I did some mountain climbing in Ecuador. 
which was absolutely out of this world. And then I went to the Galapagos Islands for a few days. And I spent some time in Quito as well. Thank you for the hearts. Thanks so much. And do let me know where you're watching from if you're just joining me. Uh, my name is John Sabo. I host the podcast series Far East Adventure Travel. I'm a photographer and I live in Asia and travel all throughout Asia. And I think we'll, we'll go down to the actual tomb where his uh, inscription is written. And he wrote it himself. They don't always, uh, the emperors didn't always write them for themselves, but he didn't have a, a true heir to leave the throne to, so he ended up writing it for himself, and apparently it's a very humble. Uh, sorry about the keto comment, just please mention that again, I just missed that, I was coming down the steps and I wasn't looking at the screen. Um, so uh, he wrote this uh, epitaph for himself, and apparently it's the theme is modest. We're going to go up and see the actual tomb of uh, Duduk, Duduk. And then, um, and then I'll walk you around back down to that pavilion, which is so beautiful. The floors, you have to take your shoes off. The floors are just absolutely like piano keys. Has it changed in six or seven years? I don't know. I did like Quito. Yes, I, I loved Quito, actually. And I thought it was really beautiful. The square and where the presidential palace is is absolutely a stunning square down there. I like hanging out down there, going out for dinners and stuff. I just, I didn't, uh, I, I, I would go out to Gringo Land, Gringo Land there, they call it, where all the tourists hang out. I go there for dinner sometimes, but I like to go to the regular places too. This is uh, Didak's tomb, and I'll show you the uh, big tablet where his, his, like his epitaph is written on. No, it doesn't appear like there's any damage at all here from the war. Now, there could have been, and they might have repaired it, but I don't think there was any sort of combat. These places were outside of the town, and most of the battle was... Uh, no, I don't eat tuna for dinner. Uh, most of the battle uh, was in the town itself, and, the, and, and at the Citadel, uh, the historic uh, Forbidden City there, and uh, the buildings around the citadel because there was a base in there. There was an army base in there as well, or military base. So outside of the city, where I'm at right now, not so much uh, combat here. So I think a lot of these sites, like the tombs, were spared from uh, the Vietnam War. But they, I mean, they, I mean, they've had to restore them because you can see some of them are, you know, showing their age here. Yes, I have been to the Imperial City, like inside the Citadel. I've been already. I'll go one more time. I'll try to scope from there as well. Um, you know, initially some of these sites I'll go once. I'll take pictures and uh, sort of sc scope it out. And then maybe another time I'll film if I have time. Sometimes I might have to just film and photograph all in one sitting. Look at this. Isn't this stunning? With the trees in the background, that frame. It's so, even with the people walking around and saying stupid things, it's very peaceful here, I have to tell you. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much, Boston. You're, you're fantabulous. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for watching. Thanks for sharing on Twitter as well. Uh, feel free to share on Twitter and Facebook uh, the broadcast. And it's easy right now, live, you can, you can swipe the screen left to right on iOS or up on Android and share. Thank you. I really appreciate that. It's fun to share this stuff with you guys, by the way. It is, I always get excited when I'm sharing these things with people. Uh, yeah, it's fairly hot here. It's probably in the mid-30s right now. You know, you can't stay outside walking around, hiking gear and stuff uh, for too long. You've got to take breaks. So I'll usually take a midday break. So after this... I thought I was going to be able to get two tombs in this morning, but I don't think I'm, I'd rush it. So I think um, I'm going to stick with uh, I'm going to stick with just this. So this is the tomb. We're going right up to the tomb now. He would be actually buried here. His relics are here, but we don't know where this guy is buried. And he had everybody beheaded that was involved in the burial. I don't know how he arranged that. 
yes, yes, well, I, ha I bought one of these. Originally, this is not for, I did not buy this for the purpose of uh, scoping or live streaming. Uh, I bought it for my podcast because I do a lot of filming with my phone f for the podcast. And uh, I just transitioned it into uh, Periscope once Periscope switched to landscape. So once once Periscope was on landscape, I could use this a lot more. And it's really cool because now I'm actually editing these videos and using them as part of my podcast as well. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm, I'm uh, taking some of the best highlights of my Periscopes and I'm putting them on my podcast too. This is his tomb. And the, he's, his remains are not in here, just the relics of uh, the Emperor Duduk, longest reigning emperor in the Nguyen era of Vietnam. The last emperor uh, ruled until 1945, and he abdicated. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. This is uh, uh, Duduk's tomb, the Emperor, Emperor Nguyen's tomb here in Hue, Vietnam. Hue is considered the spiritual capital of the country, the heart of the country. <laughs> See, they made these, they made these guys perfect, pur purposely smaller than the emperor. These guards here. We're going to go down to this pavilion down here where he uh, he used to write poetry and have his concubines around him. Cicadas in Japan, yes, and in Taiwan as well. And they're here too. Cicadas are here too. I, um... Oh, thanks so much. Thanks for watching. Do you take care. Thank you. I'm going to, going to go down to the pavilion here. Um, I think I saw some fish earlier, yes. I think I did see some fish. They play music here as well. They have uh, little uh, traditional uh, uh, concerts here. I heard some fish. So we were up there a little bit earlier. You see the wood here, the beams, and the floors are beautiful. Yeah, they sound some, I'm not sure if they're cicada for sure. They sound like cicada. There's a few birds here. I can hear roosters. <laughs> Those are birds, aren't they? Yeah, the ladder goes down to the water. Yeah. Did you want to go down? <laughs> I don't think I... Uh... I might slip. My yeah, I might slip. I'd like to. I'd like to go down. Show you, but we can s sit on it. How's that? Ah. There we go. Well, I guess there's probably at a time you had little boats here. You could take a little boat out with your concubine, and or just if he wanted to be by himself, he could have a little boat out here. Yeah, there's fish here. I just can't see any right now. I heard I heard one jumping earlier. I heard a splash earlier. Thanks for watching Far East Adventure Travel. This is uh, Duduk's tomb in uh, Wei, Vietnam. Makes you richer. Not only that, when you buy, and I'm not against buying things, but when you buy something, like a material thing, it wears off the the. The newness wears off after a while, but you know, after you travel a place, the memories just get richer and stronger, and it's like wine, it just gets better with age, and it becomes more richer, and you have stories to tell, and maybe the stories get even bigger, but who cares? Because you've got something you can hang on to, it's in your soul. Nobody can take that away from you. You have it for your whole life. It's in you. 
It's a part of you. One last look at the pavilion here. Thank you guys so much for watching Far East Adventure Travel. And do do me a favor uh, to help me out because, I, like I said, um, I'm getting uh, uh, a little stunted here right now with the uh, 3G. I'm not able to tweet out everything. If you could retweet the broadcast afterwards, that would be awesome too. You'd be a big help for me. I'm in Hue, Vietnam. This is uh, Duduk's tomb, one of the Nguyen Emperor's tombs here. He reigned the longest in Vietnam longest reigning emperor in Vietnam for 36 years. Okay, guys, thanks so much. Do please remember to retweet out the broadcast for me and have an awesome evening or day. And we'll see you very soon from Way Vietnam. This is John Sabo, Far East Adventure Travel. Take care. Bye now.